So what happens when you have Apple enthusiast friends and a 24 core Threadripper just lying around? Uh, well obviously a Threadripper Hackintosh. This video is going to be a full guide explaining how to do that, how to create your bootable USB media which is kind of a massive part of this, and explaining a few extra things as well. Now like I said the majority of the work here is actually just creating your bootable media and so as long as you have a Windows machine around that has a spare USB port and a USB stick to install too, uh, you should be all good. Happily, there's actually a load of tools, most of which are from a guy called Corp Newt, uh, who is, uh, first of all, awesome, second of all, not only in our Discord server, which you can join in the link in the description, but also runs the massive Hackintosh Discord as well, um, and he's ha made a load of tools that are available that are open source on GitHub that help you make all of this happen a lot easier than it used to be. Now, to start off with making your USB stick, the first thing you need to do is download everything that you'll need. In no particular order, you'll need Gib macOS, Gen SM BIOS, and then either the AMD Vanilla Patches tool to uh, create and uh, update the most recent config.plist file, or if you're using this specific configuration or building it relatively soon from when this video goes up, I've also hosted the specific config.plist file that I used here, which you can use yourself, uh, and that can be downloaded again in the links in the description down below. There's sources for everything or links to the GitHub pages and all that sort of stuff for everything everything in the links in the description down below. So we're going to start off with the Gib macOS tool. Now this one, for no particular reason that I can see in the code, but generally speaking in my experience, has to be on your C drive. Ideally just extract it to a folder in your downloads folder and you'll be good to go. Uh, but we're going to use that tool first. We're going to use the Gib macOS.bat file, which all you do is run it or double click it, and then you're going to uh, let it set up. It's then going to give you some options of which version of macOS to download. Just press 1 press enter and then let it download. Once it's all downloaded you're good to go from there. Next up we're actually going to go about making our bootable USB stick. Now this is pretty simple but I would mention that there's actually quite a lot of steps after making your USB stick initially bootable so bear with me here but we're going to use the uh, make install.bat file that's in the same folder as give macOS.bat the one we used earlier. Now make sure that your USB stick is plugged in before you run this but once you do it should then list what connected drives you have. In my case I'm using a Corsair Voyager slider so I'm going to press 5. You press whatever number is next to the drive you want to install to. Uh, for this uh, setup all you do is you press the number and press enter. You don't need to add any extra letters or anything else, just the number and press enter. It's then going to ask you to confirm that you want to delete everything on the drive. Press Y and then enter and let it do its thing. It's then going to ask you for the location of the recovery image. This is actually something that is in the same folder, it's actually in a subfolder in the, the Gib macOS folder under uh, macOS downloads, public release, and then whatever version of macOS you've downloaded. Now you need to copy that address with quotation marks around it specifically because the Mac uh, OS uh, folder name has a space in it and consoles don't really like spaces, but uh, so basically you, do, you put open quotation, paste that link in, and then add backslash recovery HD meta uh, DMG dot pkg uh, and then close quotation mark. Once you've done that you can press enter and let it do its thing and once it's finished you can then close out of that and we're ready to continue. Next up you're going to want to pick what kex you're going to use. Now kex are kernel extensions and you can think of them like drivers in Windows. They're essentially just a way of you uh, being able to use hardware that isn't fully supported by Mac OS by default. So in theory this means that you can use stuff like Nvidia graphics cards for example but I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I've got an ARM AMD RX 580, uh, which is essentially fully supported at the box, but maybe we can go through that in a future video. The bare minimum kex that you need to use here are either fake SMC or virtual SMC. Now, your USB stick will already have fake SMC on it, so I would just leave that for the time being, but you can actually swap them out in the future if you prefer. Uh, I would mention that you will need to use kex for stuff like your Ethernet or Wi-Fi if you want those to work, which obviously if you want any level of internet connection, you'll need a kex to run that, so you need to check what chipset your motherboard or your network card uses. In my case, my board uses an Intel 211 NIC, and so I've got a kex for that. You'll also want to use an OC 
CPU power management, and if you want any level of audio to come out of your Hackintosh, then you want Apple SL, uh, ALC and uh, Lilu as well. Uh, Lilu is a Kex loader, which lets you use not supported Kex, which is great, and is actually a, a requirement to be able to use stuff like Apple ALC as well. You'll need to copy those Kex to your USB drive. You can find that at this file path, but essentially there's a folder inside Clover, EFI, Clover, uh, called Kex. You want to go inside the other folder and paste them all in there. And since you're looking at the files on the USB stick, you need to swap a couple things around. You want to go to Clover, EFI, Clover, drivers off, drivers U, uh, 64 UEFI, and copy the aptio memory fix and the HFS plus EFI files to, uh, again, file path here, but Clover, EFI, Clover, drivers 64 UEFI. Once that's copied in there, you're generally good to go, all barring the config file. In the words of Corpnute himself, the config.plist file is really kind of 90% of the soul of a modern Hackintosh. There's a lot that you can customize, and I think he kind of explains it a lot better than I ever could in his description of an uh, Intel Coffee Lake uh, config.plist file. So if you want to learn more about that and what you can customize with it and a lot of uh, configuration options, then take a look at that link in the description down below as well and have a read of that. The bare minimum that you need to do with a config.plist file is generate a new SM BIOS. Now this can be done with Corpnute's Gen SM BIOS tool and I would recommend using his other tool, AMD Vanilla Patches, to generate the most recent config.plist file. But if you just want to use the one that I've used for the system, that is also available in the links in the description down below. Either way, once you have that file that's ready for your system, you can then copy it to your USB stick. Again, you're just going to want to copy it to the, the the uh, location on screen, but it's clover slash EFI slash clover, and you want to replace the file that's already there. Once you've replaced it, you can then go about generating the SM BIOS. So you're going to use the Gen SM BIOS tool. Again, extract it just to a folder in your downloads folder, and then run the Gen SM BIOS .bat file. Once it's open, you're going to want to press one and then enter and let it install Mac Serial, and then you'll press two and uh, paste the location of the file you've just replaced on your USB stick into the terminal window. This is again going to be similar to the file path you see on screen, but basically it's your drive letter Clover ES. FI, Clover, and then uh, slash config, config .plist. Once you've pasted that in and pressed enter, you can then press three and enter to generate your new SM BIOS. Now I'll ask you what type of Mac you want to emulate here, and for this system, for Ryzen systems, you want to type iMac 14,2. Again, that's hopefully on screen, but that's what you want to press and then press enter and it should generate a new SM BIOS for you. Now, just because the trickiest bit is over doesn't mean there aren't a few things that might catch you out in the meantime. So I'm going to talk you through actually installing macOS onto your system. The first thing you're going to want to do is boot from your USB stick. And once you do, you'll see the Clover splash screen where you can select what is likely the leftmost option of booting from USB. Once you do, you'll get the macOS installer, and before installing, you actually need to format the drive you want to install to first. Uh, either if it's a new SSD, or even if it's been previously used on Windows, it likely won't have the right file system on it, and so you need to press the, uh, actually you need to show all drives up at the top first, and then when you do, you can then press the actual drive itself, and format it, or press the erase button, uh, and give your uh, new drive a name, make sure that it's using the GUID partition tables, and the macOS extended journaled file system. Uh, once that's done, you can then close that out and actually go and install macOS on your system. It's gonna reboot a few times, and when it does, you need to make sure that you press the boot from macOS and not the boot from USB option, and then it will continue installing. Once that's done, it will reboot one more time, and then again, you press the boot from macOS or Mac HD or whatever you named your hard drive rather than booting from USB, uh, and then you'll be able to set up your new Mac. Now, there is one more step after you've actually installed macOS, and that is to make sure that you never have to boot from the actual USB stick again. You can just boot from the hard drive like a normal PC. And so the way we're gonna do that is downloading Clover Configurator. You're going to want to open that in Finder once it's downloaded, as you won't be able to open 
open it from the taskbar. You'll just go to Finder, press Downloads, right click, open, and then that should be good to go. Uh, but once it is open, you're gonna press the Mount EFI button on the left-hand side, sort of in the middle, and then you'll press the Mount Partition button on the sort of bottom right-hand side. Uh, you should be able to see that on screen. Uh, once that's mounted, you can then open Finder and navigate to your USB stick, which should still be plugged in. Uh, copy the EFI folder, the whole folder, and then go to the EFI folder that you've just mounted as your you know, main drive. Delete the EFI folder that's in there already, and then paste the new one from your USB stick in, and then you are good to go. Your Mac is ready to enjoy. So that is quite the list of instructions. I hope it's been easy enough to understand. As I mentioned, if it hasn't, there's a link in the description down below to a written article, which should hopefully be a little bit easier to understand if nothing else. Uh, and also you can check out all of the sources for the tools that we use, the kecks and uh, all that sort of stuff in the links in the description down below. I know that it's a bit of a complicated procedure. We actually had quite a few problems with incomplete guides and stuff like that in, uh, in actually installing this for the first time. So if you follow these instructions sort of to the letter, you should be all good to go and in theory shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, you can let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and answer what I can. But you can also check out both my Discord server, which is linked in the description, and the Hackintosh and AMD OS X servers, uh, Discord servers that will give you possibly better advice than I can about any problems you might have. So with all of that said, I'm trying to write a tool that should make it easier to make bootable media for Ryzen Hackintoshes, and if that does end up happening, then I'll make a separate video about that. And if you're interested in seeing me making videos about trying to get uh, NVIDIA graphics cards to work, then you can also let me know in the comments down below as well. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, especially with the new Ryzen 3000 series chips that are coming up literally on Sunday, then you can check out that subscribe button with the bell notification icon and a load of links in the description down below. Not only the sources for this video, but also stuff like Patreon if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so, or just the Amazon Overclock GK affiliate links if you want to buy 24 core thread rippers for a new Hackintosh, for example. Uh, it doesn't cost Cost you anything well the thread will cost you something but using my link doesn't uh, and it massively helps me out there's also stuff like private internet access which is a great and cheap vpn or you can check out humble bundle for cheap games and support charities too otherwise there are some videos over there that you can check out but otherwise that's pretty much it i will catch you all in the next video